And then our main event is just is still something, Blake, that is so shocking to me that I still can't believe what we saw because Max Holloway is so damn good at fighting. I really don't know what what else to say besides that. And what how were you feeling through this fight? I, f- I mean, it was really entertaining uh, start to finish. But what I saw online a little bit was people were somehow ragging on Max Holloway because he landed so many strikes. They turned it from a positive to a negative somehow, saying that like he, he has like pillow hands and stuff oh. like that and just, you know, can't finish his opponents. And it's like, man, you just you, – there's no please in these guys. Just look at Cater's face. His that nose was, was caved in. Yeah. No. I don't know. Cater's just I mean, has a chin of granite. I, I, he's just a beast. I mean, it really seemed to me that uh, Max's greatest defense against Cater, who has a hell... I mean, he he clipped Holloway with a few ridiculous punches. Yeah, he did. Holloway ate it. It I wasn't think, totally you know, one-sided. Cupcake. Also, Holloway does have a great chin as well. There's he's a reason a he's... Chin. There's reason Holloway's never been knocked down in his UFC career. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was just tough to watch at some points too, honestly. Yeah. I mean... Holloway was his his greatest defense in my opinion was his offense in that fight him just peppering those strikes and they're not allowing Cater to really return fire um and keeping him kind of off balance the whole fight mm-hmm. pressuring him uh it, it was like you said it was probably one of the better performances we've seen in, of recent memory um with within the UFC organization I mean he, he barely got he barely took too many he didn't take that many hard hits but he mm-hmm. did take a few that were a little risky um he got to talk his trash in there he got to do a little little bit of cody no love dancing as well see a little no look sweet. a no look punch <laughs> yeah so i mean just super entertaining he did it i think he put on a excellent showcase for the ufc and uh you know made everyone proud that's a part of the ufc really hey for not um having a single sparring session in his last two fight camps he looks pretty damn good. I, I guess not everyone needs to spar like that. I just want to give you the records that he broke um, on this fight. Uh, pretty much every record he broke was his own. So significant strikes landed. He landed 445. The pre- So he landed 445. His previous, the previous year, was 290, which is insane. So to put that to, to kind of other sports context, Blake, for you, that's like if Will Chamberlain backed up his 100 point game with a 153 point game or if Adrian Peterson topped his 296 yard rushing game with 454 yards or that's like Max Scherzer throwing extra innings and striking out 31 people in the game that's what Max Holloway did with those the significant strikes attempts um, was 744 so just throwing punches constantly it reminded me almost like what we saw from um from, uh, uh, you speak that uh, against uh, was it Colby Covington against um, Robbie Lawler? You spoke of him. It, it kind of reminded me like that, except it was way more brutal. Um, distance strikes, he broke a record for that. Head strikes, body strikes, uh, landed significant strikes landed in a round with 141, and total strikes landed was 447. Then total strikes sent to 746. So all these numbers, Blake, just astronomical it's really hard to, to, to kind of put that into perspective it's just crazy what he did it was a it was a record-breaking performance and folk see now the thing is blake i want brian ortega to beat alexander volkanovsky so we can get this rematch between hollow and ortega because it's going to be way better than the first time we saw them fight yeah we'll see it's going to be a very uh good matchup i think mm-hmm. we'll see if ortega can you know, provide a different look for Volkanovski because I mean, Volkanovski clearly has the answer to beat Holloway. Mm-hmm. Even though I felt the second one, that's we, another story, though. We all did. It's okay. <laughs> and, and this man, at least it, it, it's one of the rare times, Blake, that is a fight fan. No matter who wins, we can't lose because if Ortega beats Volk Volkanovski, we get Ortega versus Holloway too. Dana almost confirmed that Holloway is getting a shot at the belt after this. Or he has if, to. He's the best he's the best featherweight in the world. He's the best featherweight of all time. Or if 
Volkanovski beats Ortega, they would get the trilogy fight. And this is one of the rare trilogy fights that can get the fourth fight or maybe even the fifth fight, depending if they want to actually like get get the um beat the split and stuff like that. So you can just print money with this. But all I got to say, fantastic thing. I mean, he really beat the brakes off of Calvin Cater. I've never seen a scorecard so lopsided. We had two 50-43s, then a 50-42. So we had one judge giving um, Holloway three 10-8 rounds. When's the last time he's seen that? <laughs> yeah, he really did put a whooping on him. But also, real quick, though, do want to give a lot of credit to Calvin Cater because he still put up a good performance in his own right, and it's still super impressive what he is able to do and that he was getting his ass whooped in the fifth round and he was still smiling and taking shots so i don't know if he's going to fall too far he still is a contender and he's still a phenomenal fighter and there's i'm not really going to take away much from here hollow is just the greatest featherweight of all time it's that simple